Hey everyone, welcome back to the Rails Foundation series. So in this episode right here, I'm gonna be covering active storage. So this is gonna be the first part, uh, so we're gonna set it up and basically we're gonna actually do the whole process of actually uploading it using a form. Uh, now there's a few things here I wanna talk about uh, and that's the, you know, right now we're just gonna keep it very simple. Um, there is something called direct upload, which means you can upload direct to uh, like a remote storage, like for example, Google Cloud Storage or Amazon S3 or Azure Cloud, Azure Blob Storage or whatever. Um, you know, we're not gonna cover that in this episode. This right here, we're just gonna cover the basic, setting up the, you know, active storage in our app, uh, talking a little bit about, uh, you know, the ideas behind it and why active storage was included in Rails. Um, so let's hop into that. Uh, basically, you know, before um, this, you know, Rails used to be, one of the things that people used to do a lot is obviously uploading images and files and videos and all kinds of stuff. And there's been a lot of libraries out there that um, basically allows people to actually accomplish just that in Rails. And, uh, you know, the, the Rails core team saw that and, you know, decided that, hey, you know, we should do our own core implementation of the API for managing uploads and all that stuff. So that's why now we have active storage. So um, let's hop right in. So I have a fresh branch over here created. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, you know, this, the configuration over here. Uh, so if I head over into the config file, there's this uh, storage. Uh, and basically this is where you would configure, um, you know, how you want the uploads to happen and all that stuff. In this case, right now, locally, we're just going to use um, disk and it's going to upload to a storage directory. And uh, so it's just going to be using a local directory. And for development purposes, that's fine. Um, and if we head over into the environment development, you will see active storage is actually using the local uh, disk storage. Now, here's the thing, right? Why would you want to use S3 or um, Google Cloud or whatever? Um, so so the, the problem is, let's say you have your Rails app running on one machine and uh, it's fine and you can upload to that machine. Um, but generally what happens is you want to scale horizontally. And if you scale, uh, you know, more, you have more than one Rails node of your app running, so now instead of having one machine, one VM, you have two or three, or even running in containers, um, you might have three of your uh, Rails app running, but now when you upload, you're only uploading to that local storage. So local storage won't work in production um, is the point I'm trying to get to here. Uh, so you will probably need to use something like S3 and uh, Google Cloud and Azure or Azure uh, in production. Uh, but in this case, we're just trying to learn the concepts. And so let's hop right into it. So um, to get uh, set up and running, we need to set up a few database uh, tables. So I'm going to do Rails Active Storage Install. So what this is going to do is generate us the migration that we're going to be able to use in order to store all of our, all of our uploaded data. Um, it's actually not going to store the uploaded, you know, the actual file in here. It's just going to store the metadata of the file in the database. So you can see here we have two tables going to be created by um, Rails. And then basically all we would have to do next is just set up the relations and all that stuff. So we're going to go ahead and do just that. So Rails uh, DB migrate will set up the database for us. And the next thing we're going to do is we just need to, um, we can actually do the actual upload uh, now. Um, so all we need to do is just uh, set up the relationship. So here in the post, I'm going to ha do a has one attach cover picture. So basically what this is going to do is uh, it's going to set up the relationships and you know do all the hard work for us in terms of setting up the how the cover picture and all that's going to work. Uh, and all we really have to do now is you know treat this like any other attribute in our app. And uh, so we just need to add a uh, cover picture here to our post params in the admin. And basically, you know, it's going to use this, it's going to allow us to actually, you know, use cover picture now in our uh, strong parameters. And so the next thing we're going to need to do is we just need to um, uh, modify our form to support uploading of the cover picture. So I'm going to head over into the view and in the admin form here, I'm just going to add a div class form group. And then here we're going to do f.label cover picture and f dot file field cover picture and that's pretty much it uh, it's really that simple uh, you know just to get started 
So I'm gonna go to the publish post, go to test post over here. Uh, and let's actually go into the edit, not the actual post. So we can see now we have a file view we can upload. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose a file from here. And I'm gonna choose my Codemy logo here and click open and click save. And you see that it pretty much did the whole uploading for us. Uh, you can see here, uh, it updated the active storage blob and whatever. So the actual upload is already there. So let's take a look at the result, like what it did, where it stored the file, what happened in the database. And um, yeah, so let's hop right in. So I'm gonna go into here and you can see here, uh, let me close this DB directory. We have a storage directory and you can see here, this is the file that got uploaded. It uploaded right here in the local directory of the application. And that's generally, as I mentioned, not what you really wanna do in production. But for now, for learning purposes, this is fine. Um, so if you wanna to upload to S3, um, you know, we'll walk you through all that and, you know, in, in another episode. Uh, but for now, we have actual image uploading actually working. So I'm gonna, if I head into the database over here, so I'm gonna open up my database here and I'm gonna load up my uh, development database, rightfully development over here. And you can see here we have two tables and it's filled up. So you can see here, uh, one is actually storing the, you know, the name's cover picture and the record type is post record ID, blob ID. So now if we go to the blob, you can see the key is stored here um, and you know what type of image it is. It, it, so it did all this work um, to figure everything out for us um, you know, beforehand and uh, you know, image processing and everything. Um, so if you're getting a failing upload at this point, uh, that's probably because you don't have image magic installed. So what you wanna do is if you're on a Mac, a brew uh, install image, Magic. I already have Image Magic installed, so that's why everything just worked out of the box. But if you if you're running into issues, that's probably the first thing I'll take a look at. Um, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this episode. This is a free episode. In the next episode, we're gonna be uh, trying to actually pull that data from low, uh, from uh, active uh, st storage, and uh, and basically we are going to um, you know display the cover picture. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. And then uh, later on, we're gonna uh, move on to covering con how to configure an S3 bucket to actually work with active storage. Um, and then we're gonna move on to talking a little bit about background images, back uh, sorry, background processing, uh, and why you don't wanna do a lot of the work, you know, inside your web request. Um, so yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for this episode. I hope you guys like it, uh, enjoyed it and uh, share this video with your friends and family and uh, we would appreciate that a lot. Um, and so yeah, with that, I'm gonna wrap up this episode. I'll see you guys in the next one.